Yeah, so we're Coover. We're um, a creative studio. We're based out in the UK. We are a team of technologists, of uh, designers, uh, engineers, artists that cover a broad spectrum of, of different different subjects, different topics. We work with brands um, and sort of cultural institutions um, to make a range of pieces, ranging from data visualizations, um, web-based experiences, installations. We've been working in partnership with IOHK to explore cryptocurrency. Uh, we've been doing that through um, a project called, we're calling Symphony of the Blockchain, which is an audio-visual experience of cryptocurrency. Uh, we've developed a web-based experience um, that allows users to navigate through the history of the blockchain um, and explore all those different internal properties and some of those abstract data points that people aren't familiar with. And it's been it's been a really fascinating sort of journey for us um, that we've that we've got to learn a lot about this underlying technology and sort of finding a, a metaphor in which we can present it through. We're really keen to take this further and make it a tool of utility. Um, and that's that's the big thing for us is the idea that we can we can use this as a means for people to compare different cryptocurrencies. Um, the underlying um, design process of this is to be able to represent properties of cryptocurrency um, and by having the ability to compare something like Bitcoin compared to um, Ethereum, Cardano um, or IOTA um, allows you to see these inherent properties underlying and just compare them. So we want to make it, we really want to make it something where people have never seen it before and they can come to it and uh, use it. Um, they can look for specific dates, they can find forks. Um, something that's never been conveyed before is the idea that the branches and the forks in the history of, of blockchains. The idea of using scale and um, colour um, in a 3D environment is really well first to, to be used in a sort of VR experience because you can navigate that space, you can pick things up, you can explore blocks as tangible objects that you can hold in your hand, which is, which is going to be amazing to do. And we'd also like to expand this work and, and use it in a, take it on a touring uh, in, in a sort of an exhibition kind of environment where we can take it to different places and allow people to come to this space and explore those different aspects of cryptocurrency. The challenges for us, I think the main, the main challenge for us was we never had any understanding of cryptocurrency at all. Um, it was something that was on our periphery, the idea of the blockchain, of, of, um, uh, you know, uh, of these financial transactions that happen in a very different way to the norm. Um, was entirely new and it, and it allowed us to kind of really investigate that the, both the technology but the concept as well and what that facilitates um, on a social level. We've been looking at um, some WebGL technology that is very new. We're trying to push the envelope always um, creatively in what we can do and both technically what we achieve. Uh, hi guys, thanks very much for, um, for coming today. Um, this is a little um, slot we're going to do on uh, a little bit about us and the projects we're working on. Um, so yeah, just to start off, hi. Um, again, thanks for coming. Um, we are, we're Coover. we're really excited to be here um, to, to sort of show off a bit of the work and some of the stuff that we've been doing on with IOHK um, and tell you a little about what we do. Um, my name is Mark London. I'm the creative director and, and the sort of founder of Coover. Um, we are a design studio um, based out of the UK. Um, and I always find it's, to give you a bit of background about what we do, it's often better to sort of show some of the work we do rather than explain it. Um, we do a lot of, it's quite dark there, you can't see it, but um, we do a lot of large scale sort of data visualization pieces. Um, this is something we did for Twitter uh, last year, which is a sort of touring exhibition of their social media data. Um, again, you can't, it's quite dark, you can't see it, but um, there's a large screen there and there's a sort of a lot of, uh, it's a data visualization piece. Um, we help sort of generate and concept content for um, different clients. We range, we work with brands such as Adidas, it's a project we did last year. Um, uh, this is the Geneva Car Show. We did a live interactive piece on the on the background there, um, and we sort of walk with uh, institutions, uh, sort of cultural institutions. This is something we did for the New School, who are a university in uh, in New York. Uh, we did a piece with. Um, we also have worked on have worked on a uh, project for Google. This is um, a doodle that went on the homepage. Um, of Google for 24 hours, which was quite stressful. <laughs> um, 
And um, that leads us on to a little bit about why we're here today, why I'm here. Um, I want to talk about a really exciting project that we've been uh, sort of working on with, with the creative team at IOH, um, IOHK. Um, it's really exciting. We call it the Symphony of the Blockchain. Um, and it's launching today. Um, so the Symphony of the Blockchain is an interactive audiovisual exploration of cryptocurrency uh, and blockchain through Bitcoin. Um, I'll go through in a little bit of that later. Um, it's an ongoing research initiative that we're working to get together with um, to help bring about a sort of greater understanding of some of the technolo technology that underpins um, cryptocurrency. So today what I'm going to go through is, is um, a little bit about the sort of the design process that we went through to get to our final piece. Um, you know, how we got to where we are, uh, a walk through some of the, the, the visualizations that we've done, and then show you a little bit about what's coming next, the next stages of, of the project uh, for the next six months. Um, so how did it all start? Well, you know, basically we started off about a few months ago with, with Richard and Charles and Jeremy in a room, and the brief was basically, what does a blockchain look and sound like? Which is quite a sort of abstract concept, to be honest. Um, we wanted to explain blockchain technology and look specifically at cryptocurrencies. Um, no limitations, no restrictions. That was the brief. Um, so the first step of undertaking this project as a studio um, was to try and sort of understand the blockchain. I mean, we are a design studio. This is, we often work with different pieces of technology that we've never come in contact with. Blockchain was definitely one of those. We've never, um, we've never worked in this space before. It was very new to us. I, by no means, am a mathematician. So just as a word of warning, I may throw in some terminology now and again that is entirely misused and out of context, but hopefully you just get the, the general gist, gist of what I'm trying to say. Um, so, yeah, so we, we, we kicked off, basically, with this, this period of time where we had to go in and investigate what the blockchain was. This is the whole team. Um, here's us just sort of throwing some ideas together, um, basically trying to de decipher some of the te technology, the, um, the implementation, and just the concept of what makes the blockchain and how that impacts cryptocurrency. Um, yeah, and, and I'm going to say that after doing that, we're kind of, it feels like maybe one of the few design studios that actually can get their head around or talk about Merkle trees and, and such, uh, with the, so it's quite new. Um, once once we, we sort of dove into that a little bit more, the next step as a design process is, is when you're doing data visualizations to find the metaphor to an object, uh, to, to a technology. It's really important for us. Um, in order to investigate technology and to investigate whatever you're trying to represent, you need to find the narrative, you need to find a story, you need to find the metaphor through which a, you can use as a lens to understand, to critique whatever it is you're trying to display. Um, so we found, we went through many different angles and many different approaches to try and understand this, what it means, you know, what are the technologies under, uh, underpinning it. Um, some of the common terms that we kept coming across was these ideas of um, as data as a immutable structure, as it has permanence. Um, it, it sort of exists and it has interconnectivity with other data structures. These were kind of common threads and common terms that came up in the vernacular as we were, as we were investigating it. Um, we wanted to sort of, we, it very much felt like this, this idea that these, these structures had a physicality to them. Um, and we hit upon this metaphor of, of um, crystal structures. This is, this is, this is very interesting because there's a lot of parallels between, um, be between data structures in general. They have inherent properties. Um, for example, in, in structures like this, there are internal sort of chemical constituents um, that affect a broader macroscopic structure. Like the internal properties of what makes these has, 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 has made these broader structures and it's only because of those internally. There's other things like they have, um, if you think about diamonds, diamonds have um, sort of, uh, you know, sort of infractions inside them, inclusions that affect how they are viewed. And these were brought about because of the process, because of the growth, um, where they came from. It tells a little story about where they came from, and these are part of the part of the story. Here's just some examples of the process we went through, looking at all these different ways that um, you know crystals are represented, and the, the shape and the range of them that all comes from these very fundamental underlying principles. And some more here. 
This is all just a sort of body of research that we're just trying to formulate this metaphor, this idea of, of what we could use. We wanted to explore the idea of like the idea that maybe we could represent things inside the blockchain, inside blocks, um, using these metaphors. Um, so things like the scale uh, of, of these objects or like the value of the blockchain, fees, how they might translate into physical properties such as um, the texture, the lighting, um, how it disperses light, all these things where uh, they have these connections to the inputs of the data, to the outputs of a visual and sound-based structure. <coughs> Having looked at this idea of this metaphor and sort of latched onto that in a certain sense, we really we, we started to like extend upon that this idea of um, you know encapsulating or encoding um, data within an entity within a physical permanent structure um, and placing positioning you know frozen in time almost um, pieces that could be looked at viewed at in isolation. For example, like you know, when a block gets created, it can be moved, it can be held, it can be transacted. You know, it, can, it moves around. Um, we found it a very sort of interesting sort of idea to explore, and there's some other aspects to it. Um, this is a few pieces of work by an artist called uh, Jack Storm. These two here in the corner. Um, he's an incredible artist. Um, he has nothing to do with cryptocurrency or data structures. However, we kind of latched upon this idea that there's these different elements and components that you can view, that you can see within, within this object. Um, I'll talk a little bit about, more about him later because uh, he's some interesting work he's doing. And here's some more examples here. The idea of objects encased and encapsulated in a physical entity. Um, so having moved on from this idea of you know, using this metaphor, using this encoded structures, using um, crystals as a metaphor, we started sort of prototyping and sort of fleshing out the idea. Um, we started looking at sort of um, visual explorations of it all, like motion, uh, you know, giving structures mass and what that might correlate to, the idea that transactions might have weight, how that affects other things, how that has effects later on in the network, um, and how we could convey that through things like movement. Um, another concept is this idea of connectivity, although maybe data structures exist independently, um, they, they may have correlations and connectivity between them and how we might be able to express that um, without linking them directly. We might be able to encapsulate them in something, show some sort of membrane around them that, that uh, itself communicates an idea of togetherness or how they co correlate. Um, so that's some more ideas. Um, sound, of course, is a big part of what we do. Let's just see if we can play this here. So all of this came about from the idea of that it's, it's supposed to be a symphony of the blockchain. Um, so the sound obviously has to be a big part of it. So here we're looking at these ideas, how those properties translate to things like resonance. You know, uh, you know, what does a block sound like? If it has internal properties that are reflected by data, if you hit it, what does it sound like and how we might sort of translate that? Um, so we've done many different routes and these, this is just some of the research work that we hit upon. Um, after that, we sort of moved into a kind of like the prototyping stage. This is where we actually sort of got our tools out and started putting things together and seeing how things worked and seeing how things fit together. Um, it's all well and great having this metaphor and having a sort of like an idea of how you might represent it, but unless you can actually test that against real data, it's, it's just an abstraction. It's just a, it's just a story, really. Um, <clears throat> so here we've, um, we've actually started connecting to the Bitcoin network. Um, this is really dark, but hopefully you can see a bit of that. Um, we um, have used Houdini. Houdini, if you don't know, is a sort of 3D modeling tool. Um, it's really quite an amazing piece of kit. Um, it has a lot of parallels with functional programming in the fact that you um, create geometry in a node-based environment, um, and that fact is like you're actually modeling the flow of data. So you take inputs and you model the flow of data and you end up with some sort of output. Um, here we actually wrote a uh, plugin for Houdini that connects to Bitcoin and it pulls in data, real-time data or data in the past, and it models it through this flow, through this process, and it ends up with some different varied outputs. Um, 
here is an example, it's a video. Here what we're doing is this is a block that we're looking at. Um, all these individual shards are transactions within that block and it's distributed over a sphere. Um, this is us just a very early prototyping, just smashing together different ideas and getting some output. Um, there's a lot of like, st uh, it's very stochastic in its nature, it's quite random, there's just, it's, we're just seeing if we can get the, a proof of concept working. Um, we then extended that to uh, some sort of like renders. Uh, you can't quite see it here, but um, it's, it's quite interesting, you know, it may be not exactly what we're looking for, but this idea that, that you have this block, you have this, these transactions in it where the height of them represent the value of that transaction. Um, you can very quickly read this. You can understand something about it, not in detail, but you can understand there's a lot of transactions or there's, you know, however many there might be. Um, so we really like that idea that you can quickly get a gauge of some data structure. This is, this is another one. Again, very early prototype work where we are using a, we are doing the same thing where we're distributing sort of transactions over a disk. We're using the height of them to uh, by the value again. However, again, it's 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 fairly sort of random in nature, but we still think it's quite interesting. And then some more sort of outputs of that renders, and it's interesting how all these you start seeing all these internal reflections and how different transactions might have properties that affect how the light um, propagates through the volume. So it's quite interesting. One, the end of this is we ended up in, in this sort of space. Uh, now this is not a block, this is basically a day in the blockchain. Um, we landed upon this because there's something nice about having this spiral. This, this, the idea of the blockchain is, it, is it's a linked list, it just it's moves backwards in time. A revolution in that, uh, in that sort of spiral is a day. So you have this idea that you can look at it and quickly gauge the distribution of blocks, how they were positioned, the size of them, the scale of them. You can look at this and see in that day something happened, something occurred, and what, what that was. Um, this is where we kind of finally landed, and uh, we've got some, again, some early tests of how we might sort of, that might look like as an animated entity. We also went through some, uh, some applications of how we might apply UI elements of it. Um, the big thing to this is it's quite a complex, um, it's quite a complex thing to convey. Um, and even when you look, make it look beautiful, you still need some supporting, some supporting copy, some supporting documentation to explain this, to explain what you're looking at. Um, so basically just to sort of summarize and recap where we came from, this is basically the process we came from. Um, we're really excited to, to have, have gone on this journey with IOHK and the creative team and Richard, um, and we will be launching Symphony today. Um, I'm gonna take you through a little walkthrough of where we ended up. We um, went into a build phase, and here we have basically the symphony of blockchains. Um, this is going to go live on the IOHK <coughs> website, it's basically a web-based experience, so you can see this online. Um, you can view this on your mobile, on your desktop. Um, here you can see what we have is, again, the distribution of blocks in a circle and a spiral. All these blocks represent real blocks in the blockchain, and you can navigate down the history of the blockchain all the way through time, back to the inception, back to the genesis block. There's some ambient sound happening that is representative of like, the hash rate, um, that's involved on that day, so the, 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 the amount of input and the amount of processing that was involved. You can select blocks and pull them out from the, set, from the, from the spiral and view them. Here we're viewing the, the Merkle tree, which is a binary tree, as I'm sure no, many of you know, and it doesn't have any sort of dimensionality. Um, however, we're using concepts from the, uh, uh, from the block, properties inside the block, like the fees, the ratio of the fees that are involved to the value of it, trying to approximate how expensive it was to create or mine this block. And we're using that as ways to, to uh, affect how those trees grow. So each block looks fundamentally different and has a different growth pattern inside it. And again, it's not maybe immediately readable, but you can immediately tell sometimes you get very distorted and contorted um, 
tree structures. Sometimes you get very beautiful ornate ones, and these are all indicative of properties of those blocks. There is also the sound element from this as well is based upon the transactions themselves in the blocks. So the transactions occur over time and the sounds propagate and they build up. And sometimes you get very interesting things because when the blocks are generated, they, um, a lot of the transactions are grouped together. So it actually does reveal something interesting about, about that. Um, so yes, yeah, so that is going live on the IHK on the website, and we're really excited to, to sort of work with the team to, to build that. Um, you can go and have an explore, and we'd love to get your feedback on what you think about it. Um, and we're going to be sort of moving forward that in the next, in the next few months. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about what's next, because obviously um, we talk about this idea of the symphony, and what we see here is very much like the first movement of that symphony. Um, it's, it's very interesting. We found that sort of common language to it. But we need to go further, we need to do more. Um, the most important thing is we want to give it utility. That really is the key thing to us. It looks great and it's very, it's, it's very interesting as a, as a visual and audio piece, bit of, bit of art. But unless we give it utility, it's, it's going to be sort of a bit meaningless. Um, so we want to allow people to actually look for blocks, look for dates and be able to traver traverse and be able to go to dedicated points in the history of the blockchain. Um, the goal really is to create a tool in which we can compare cryptocurrencies. This is where it becomes really interesting because there's, Bitcoin is fundamentally very different to Ethereum, to Cardano, to IOTA, and visualizing them in a way that people can understand something about how they're different could be, could be amazing, and that's something we've not seen before. I think a lot of people understand there's different currencies, but they don't understand the difference between them unless you know the technical implementation. So having a way to compare them is, is going to be amazing. Like the idea that you can look at this Bitcoin and you can see, um, here's this dark, ominous sound, and you might be able to look at another currency, and it might be bright and vibrant. The colors might look different. It will make people ask those questions. Why, what makes those different? Why are those currencies different? And it, you know, I think it's provides, it could provide a really interesting way to sort of explore that, that problem. Um, and of course, um, Ada, we are really excited. We're going to be working with the team to, and the Cardano team as well to um, bring this, uh, bring Ada to the, uh, to the platform um, over, the next, over the next six months. Um, we are also going to be implementing IOTA and Ethereum. Um, all of this is going to be available open source on GitHub, so we're hoping that's going to provide, a community, to provide the community with a tool that they can, uh, they can fork this and actually create their own um, and, and submit it back. Um, but that's going to be really interesting too. Uh, we also want to do a VR experience. Again, it's very dark, but yeah. We, the, the natural thing behind this is that by using these metaphors of scale and size to a block, we... Um, by putting it on the screen, you're taking a step away from it. If you actually have seen something in VR, um, being within a room of a, of a large scale is quite a physical, you have a physical response to that because it's quite intimidating, you get claustrophobia. So having things like where we can present the scale of a block or as a monolith and stand next to it in size would be incredible. It allows you to read it a little bit easier. Um, and also allowing people to, do, to sort of co-presence so people can actually navigate the space in pairs or in a group and actually analyze and look at these things and potentially like send transactions to each other would be really great. Um, Jack Storm again, this is the artist that um, I discussed earlier. Uh, he's, he's just very incredible. He's, we've been speaking, we've been in discussions with him. Um, he was hopefully gonna have a meeting with us and the creative team um, as he's really keen to kind of start helping making some of these physical entities together. These, every time we talk about it, it's, it's a physical thing. So I think it's important that it would be that we do actually create this somehow. Um, and I think that's gonna be, that could be really useful. Um, we'd like to develop this and in further into a sort of an exhibition, all these disparate ideas around this space of exploring the blockchain and cryptocurrency. We'd like to formalize into a, a touring exhibition that we can take to places like the Guggenheim, hopefully. Um, it's, uh, it's something that we think there's so many avenues to explore and there's such a body of work that we can do. Um, so it'd be a re it's really exciting. Um, and that's it. Thank you for coming. And if anybody does really want to come and chat to us, we're here um, as a team at Coover, so we'd love to, to
take the opportunity while we're in the room and while we're all in the same space in Lisbon to actually discuss this a little bit more. So thanks. <laughs>